Hello, my name is Reverend Steve Killiman. I am the senior pastor here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. We are at 1505 South John Reddit Drive, which is on the South Loop here in Lufkin, Texas. We're basically at the intersection of Hanks and the Loop. We would love it if you could uh, if you could worship with us. We worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Uh, we hope that this is going to be something that's truly inspirational and that will will let you spend a little time with God so that you can get through your day. Uh, if you have any kind of comments, you can send them to us at that address, 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. The zip code is 75904. If you wish to send us an offering, you can send it to P.O. Box 921 also in Lufkin, Texas, but the zip code is 75902. Uh, you can send us any kind of prayer request, any kind of comment, and we do our best to return each and every one of those. So at this time, I just invite you to, to relax, put yourself in a prayerful and worshipful mood, and join and enjoy what God has offering for you. Go fight win. Amen.
let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for bringing us together in this space, wherever we are. But we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to each and every one of us worshiping. And let this be truly something wonderful and life-changing. We ask these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. Let's join in our profession of faith this morning. Our profession of faith will be the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come the judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. silent prayer and reflection. Dear Lord, as we look out over your creation, as we see the wonderful things that you do every day, as we see uh, the way that, that, that the earth, uh, even in, in the winter time, it, it just reflects uh, life. Uh, it, we see the birds, we see the other creatures as, as we go and, and look in, in, in the, the, the cold, cold weather. But we know that, that you are the creator and it is such a wonderful, wonderful creation. But we also know that, that with that creation, that with life, that there are certain obstacles that can come, that there are certain hindrances and roadblocks Lord, we ask that you continue to be with us as we face those blocks, as we face those obstacles, as we face those hindrances. Lord, those that are, are facing medical hindrances and, and medical roadblocks, we ask that you be with them uh, as they, they do the things, as they get their reports from, uh, as they, they, they come back from, from conditions and, and, and help be with us so that we can do the things that are necessary to keep us strong and going. 
Lord, we ask that you continue to bless the doctors, the nurses, the paraprofessionals, and the techs that do such a wonderful, incredible job of keeping us healthy. Lord, we, we ask that you bless our teachers, uh, bless all those that are in the education business as, as they, they get even deeper and deeper into this school year and deeper and deeper into educating our youth. And we know that it can be sometimes a very difficult and thankless job, but we are so appreciative of them. We ask that you continue to bless them. Lord, we ask that you bless this congregation. Bless our ministries that, that we uh, are, are starting and that we're continuing. And let those ministries uh, be a beacon to the world, to you and your love and your guidance. Most of all, thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. And together we lift up that prayer that he taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I don't want to hear anymore, teach me to listen, I don't want to see anymore, give me a vision, that you could move this heart to be set apart, I don't need to recognize the man in the mirror, and I don't want to trade you a plan for something familiar. I can't waste a day, I can't stay the same I want to be different, I want to be changed Till all of me is gone And all that remains is a fire so bright The whole world can see there's something different So come and be different In me And I don't want to spend my life Stuck in a pattern And I don't want to gain this world But lose what matters So I'm giving up Everything because I want to be different I want to be changed Till all of me is gone And all that remains Is a fire so bright The whole world can see There's something different So come and be different I know that I'm far from perfect But through you the cross still says I'm worth it So take this beating in my heart Come and finish what you started When they see me, let them see you Cause I just wanna be different I want to be changed till all of me is gone And all that remains is a fire so bright The whole world can see there's something different Come and be different You could be different
that's us. Hey, Tater. Huh. Oh. Is there something wrong? No, not really. Are you sure? You seem a little preoccupied. What's that supposed to mean? Do you think I'm possessed by some sort of evil spirit? <laughs> Not really, but you seem worried about something. Maybe I am. Can I help? Probably not. <laughs> Can I try? I guess. <laughs> Chip, do you ever look at the world, I mean the big world, and realize that you are, well, insignificant? Ooh. I'm sorry? <laughs> I mean, there are literally, literally millions of people in our state alone. Millions! And that's uh, several thousands. <laughs> Actually, one million is equal to one thousand thousands. That's not important. <laughs> but it is accurate. <laughs> and with all these millions of people all going about their lives, do you ever worry that you just don't matter? <sighs> I think I see where you're going with this. You do? Yes, I do. So, Tater, let me advise you not to worry. Really? <laughs> really, really. Sure, there are almost eight billion people on Earth. That's a lot of folks. <laughs> it is. And sometimes we can all wonder if we even matter, if what we do makes a difference. And you know what I've decided? What? Yes, we matter. You want to know why? Sure, why not? <laughs> because God knows every one of us. And you know what else? What? God loves each and every one of us. He knows us by name, and he loves us the same. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. So you see, you don't have to worry how God sees you. Oh, I'm not worried about me. I was concerned about you. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> I know I matter. I'm Tater, after all. <laughs> but sometimes I worry about the little people. Leprechauns? <laughs> but now that I see that you are okay with who you are, and you know that God loves everyone, even the insignificant, I feel better for you. <laughs> I really don't know what to say. <laughs> I'll alert the media. Oh. <laughs> I think we need to pray. Everyone bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank, thank you for loving us. For loving all of us. For loving all of us. We know you know us. We know you know us. And we want to do things that please you. And we want to do things that please you. Amen. Amen. There. Does that make you feel better? Why don't you say goodbye, Tater? Goodbye, Tater! Now run. <laughs> <laughs> Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost sheep! I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. 
Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost coin! In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, open up our hearts, open up our minds, and help us learn. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. You know, have you ever wondered if Jesus had like a greatest hits of all his teachings that as he goes out and goes out to the to the crowds and they just go, you know, you know give us your good ones, you know, kind of like rock bands today that, that people want to hear free bird. They want to hear that. You know, did, did he go, you know, well, you know, what message is it you want to hear? You know, well, this is one of those greatest hits. Uh, these are the first of the lost parables in Luke's gospel. Uh, the lost parables. And I don't mean that the parables themselves are lost. I mean that they're, they're talking about things that are lost. And, you know, we have lost sheep, lost coin, lost, lost people. So my question is, have you, ever, have you ever lost something, spent a lot of time searching for it? Of course, we all have. You know, that's one of the things that makes this hit, that makes this teaching so close to home. Because we have all lost things. We have all been in positions where we had to search high and low over and over. And suddenly it just kind of appears. Do you celebrate when you find things that you've lost? Do you celebrate when things wander, wander home? You know, how many of us have lost pets? Uh, as, as a child, I can remember when, uh, you know, I had our dogs were kind of free roaming. No, we didn't. We didn't have a pen for them. Uh, they were just there, and they were usually pretty close because they didn't like to get too far away from food. And uh, I was looking for my dog Pudge, and I called Pudge, and I said Pudge, and I went out, and we couldn't find him anywhere. Now Pudge had been out. There had been some other dogs that, that were running around, and, and, and Pudge had been uh, running with these dogs for a little while. But he came home. And I remember him coming home and, and me finally finding him. And i that is one of the most excited. That's one of the happiest I ever was in that young life. You know, it took a while before I was able to do something that would match that or become uh, even greater. That is excitement. When I finally found this lost dog. You know, we use parables and of, of people who get lost from the grace of God. And this is what these parables are all about, whether it be the lost sheep or the lost coin. And they find themselves and they get saved. Okay, I can see that. <laughs> I got no problem with that. But like so many things in the Bible, you know, you don't always get the same message every time you read it. Even though even the greatest hits have multiple meetings. So let's look at loss this way. Let's look at loss today. You know, was Pudge, my dog, really lost? But I just couldn't find him. You know, that's the difference. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering what it takes to really be lost. True, truth is that most of us are always where, where we can find stuff. Truth is that the coins weren't lost as much as we couldn't see them or we couldn't find them. Uh, or the, the, the woman that had, had lost them could not find them. Or the sheep just wandered off where the shepherd couldn't see them. So what's the difference? Did the coin do anything to get lost? Probably not. You know, the coin probably did not get off the pile of coins, roll off the table, hit the floor, go in the corner, get really small. You know, get really coin small so no one could see it uh, so that it could get lost. How about the sheep? Yeah, 
I'm going to say that the sheep did because sheep do sheep stuff. Sheep are not real smart. You know, sometimes they do sheep stuff and, 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 and it's not what we think that they should do. But even by it doing stupid sheep stuff, I don't think it was hiding. I don't think it was in the, the briars and the brush over there and, and, and watching the shepherd kind of giggling and stuff. Look, look what he's doing. Look, he, he can't find me. I'm over here. You know, he was just doing his sheep stuff and we couldn't find him. And we look at these parables and we say that they're parables about God's love and that's exactly what they are. But it's also about us. You know, are we really looking for grace because God's grace is always there. You know, we hear over and over and over about little things that, that people want us to, want to get between us and God's grace, us and, uh, and, and, and being with God for eternity. I mean, the things we eat, the things we wear, the things we do. They say, you're going to go to hell for that. Really? That's going to get between God's grace. You know, the things I eat is going to get between me and, and my relationship with God. The, 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 a tattoo is going to get between me and a relationship with God. Or are we just ignoring the fact that God's grace is greater than all of that? How about the ones that don't know Jesus? Are they lost? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Do they know it? Or are they kind of like the sheep wandering away from the flock doing stupid sheep stuff? You know, whose job is it to find the lost? It's all of ours. We are all shepherds, but we really have to understand what we're looking for. You know, we're not trying to find people so that, that we can shame them for the things that, we're, that they're doing. We're not trying to find people so that we can cast uh, judgments on them. Are they lost and hurting? Are these people in our society? Yeah, we see them all the time. So why aren't we helping them? Why aren't we showing God's love? God's love is always there. And yet so often, we, as followers of Jesus Christ, keep it hidden. How about ourselves? Do we get lost? Of course. How do we do that? We, we, we do things that are outside our relationship with God all the time. And when that happens, we get lost. When our lives lose, mean, 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 lose, ah, lose their meaning, we are lost. When our priorities get in the way of relationships, we are lost. Is it possible to be righteous and still lost? Yes. When that righteousness gets in between us and God's people. But here's the good news. All we have to do is relax. All we have to do is open our eyes to the obvious. Did the coin and the sheep repent before they were found? No, that's not always a requirement. Sometimes we make too much of a thing uh, with that with people. You have to repent before you can be in a relationship. Not really. God's looking for us always. Now, when we do repent, it does make that relationship stronger for us. When we're no longer lost, when we're no longer uh, out where God is looking for us, that's when great things will happen. And that's when great things will happen throughout the world. Go fight, win. Amen. As we join in Holy Communion, just a word of reminder that this is the table of Jesus. It's not the table of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. It's not even the table of the United Methodist Church. It is the table for all who wish to become and involved and in communion with him. So at that point, uh, let's go ahead and invite because Jesus, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him and who earnestly repent their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart, that we have failed to be an obedient church, 
that we have not done your will, we have broken your law, we have rebelled against your love, we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us through joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here's the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth, on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and, and then gave to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ. Eat this in remembrance of him. This is the blood of Christ. Drink this in remembrance of him. Amen. <laughs> Bye.
Go out into the world, showing the world God's love and God's grace, not just by the things that you say, but by the things that you do. Go fight win. Amen. That would be totally and in any way insignificant. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. That concludes this, this worship here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Once again, we would love for you to join us at an in-person worship. We worship at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Uh, our address is 1505 South John Reddit Drive, and that is on the South Loop. It's where Hank Street uh, intersects the South Loop. And we would absolutely enjoy it if you could come and to share and to worship with us. Uh, until then, go fight win. Amen.